we cover the uh, subsidy company. I think of you know what is called subsidy company. Anyway, I just have a give great briefing for you. What what's, what's about subsidy company? What the purpose of subsidy company benefit to a company? Subsidy company basically is a ex, extend their business model in other new business model for the current com, uh, operation company. So, because when the business is going, so they actually there are many ways to grow the business. But one of the methods we call extend the business so they call a subsidy company. Mean to say that they need to expand the business to encourage another investor to join their, their business model to come and form a new company to do the same business model, let them enjoy the uh, business expansions. This one we call the subsidy company. But subsidy company, they have some rules and regulars in behind. So one of them is the, the owner is a own of the subsidy is more than 50%. Uh, that company we call subsidy company. If below that is not a subsidy company. Uh, so this is a new concept. For the businessmen, they want to expand the business. This is another way to grow their business. We call subsidy company. So in overall, the subsidy company, but this is our new details ecosystem in our smart solutions. You can, you can see this is our total solution whereby we cover from the back end to the post and then to the online store or integrate to the third party or you go to the direct marketplace or you in, increase the uh, mem member system also can do it. So subsidy modules, it belong to which, mo which module in the whole screen here. So the idea of that, basically it belong to our back-end system, Dynamo. It's actually one of the module in the Dynamo. Okay. So anyway, this is the very important for you. So when you want, want to sell the package to your prospect, you need to know this is a package you need to introduce them, we call subsidy company. So in Dynamo, which module you should invest? I think you know we Dynamo we have three packages for interior side. There is a standard, professional, and enterprise. May I check with you if idea on this subsidy module under which package? Okay, under how? Mm. So this is a basically subsidy module is like this. Bavarish, they want to hold another new subsidy. The shareholder must be more than 51%. Huh? This we call subsidy the, uh, the right concept. If not subsidy means that the investment will be less than 51 per share in the total share of the company. This is the difference between subsidy and non-subsidy. All right, this is a share with you how it works. Then, why? Why we need to do that? You see, uh, this is uh, basically the whole business uh, growing, uh, we call the stage. Uh, from starting, we start our own company, start our own business. Then from there, we maybe do some operation to make sure that all the operation efficiently we invest the system. So in there, we need to control stock, then do the financial, and then of course, when you do their own business, there are some leaks behind that. So then, how can we diversify our uh, model? This is something share with you. Concept like this. Normally, from let's say my company called Babarish Cafe Holding Senior Bhat under Subang. So Subang there is a HQ. So they normally sub business they can expand the business with the multi outlets. You can see in the first there we can see the store in the one you meet very in the KL side. So then before that, they can go to another branch, open the Sabah and Sarawak also, can also do that. So this we call the open branches anyway. But in, in, in sense, your invest your money to build another new subsidy, take in a new company for outlets, they can invest another business we call a subsidy. They may invite the, the investor to join with your business model and open one we call subsidy module. Like this we call Subsidy one come to the picture, the name Babarish Cafe. Can you spec the name name uh, Babarish, but hold, hold this holding company, we call it. So they open in Malacca, open subsidy one. From there, you can open another, from subsidy, you can open another sub branch again. So this is under subsidy sub outlet. So this is the 
the business model you can implement for those uh, owner they need to save the investment over another business model also can do that. So this is another model, expand to home ratio also can. So this is a concept when you de uh, deploy this kind of the subsidy module. Eh? Lastly, the another called franchise. Eh? Uh, something means that the owner of the Babalish Cafe, they invest to the subsidy one and two, they need to invest some money. But another model called franchise, franchise is different. Eh? Franchise means that this is another uh, investment. They totally buy the business model from the Babalish, the whole business model. Eh? So they Babalish, they, what they earn, they only earn the franchise fees only. Eh? Because inside the franchise, the Baba Rich holding the no invest any money inside this uh, franchise business. They just share the concept money. They earn the franchise fees only. Eh? So this is another, another business model from subsidy expand to another called franchise model. That's why when you implement the franchise, you also can apply our subsidy module to control. So this is a beautiful, beautiful part of our subsidy model. You can do these two kind of business model. So this is a concept for the franchise. Okay, franchise also can do their own sub branches. It's no issue. All right. So this is a share with you how this is work. Huh? So this it means that when you invest the subsidy model, you can do new two business model. One is called subsidy company model. The other is called franchises model. All right. This is a beautiful, beautiful on how to implement the subsidy model. So now, just to share with you that next is the why we need to do that because seeing your business more success, that's why I need to uh, expand business as fast as possible. Instead of invest your own money, you can do the franchise business that will save you a lot of the cost investment. You can earn the franchise fees is easily, am right? So this is uh, you can see a lot of the success rate like the. So we call the KFC, McDonald's, ah, this we call franchise model. All right, so I think I today share with you, when you talk to your prospect, you can share with them. When you do business well, you can expand the business using this subsidy module to do other subsidy company or do the franchise pieces. All right, so when we do the uh, business consultant, this is one of the way we do encourage the merchant to invest. So, so, this is a, just I'll share with you regarding the subsidy and reason why you want to invest. So, after this, later on, we teach you how to set up in the mode and then how the system works, then what reporting you can see. So, this section, I will let Mr. Fat, to our today trainer, to train you regarding the subsidy module in the mode. All right, I will click here. Let's pass the, this uh, training session back to Fat. Okay, so today I will more talk about the setup and synchronization for the subsidiary company module. So today we will cover six top uh, six topic actually. So the first one we will talk about the company structure between the parent and subsidiary company. Okay, for here this is the structure of the company. Uh, between the parent and subsidiary company. So now we got two company. One is the ABC company, and then another one is the SYZ company. So for here, uh, ABC Sunjumperha is the parent, and then the SYZ is the subsidiary company. So this is the uh, relationship, and then here, uh, at our Dynamo Day, we have to create two database. One is the ABC and another one is the SYZ. Okay, for here we have to make sure we got two database at the Dynamo Day. So after that, after you set up the database, you have to set up the customer and the supplier for the company ABC and the company SYZ. So uh, at the company ABC there, you have to set up the uh, customer for, uh, for the subsidiary company SYZ. And then the SYZ company they have to set up the ABC uh, company as the supplier. After this setup, then 
you can see the screen sample like this. At the ABC Sundiamba hub, there you have to set up the customer for SYZ. So uh, you can see here is the SYZ is a subsidiary company, then as a customer for the ABC company or parent company there. And then the SYZ company there, we have to set up, uh, like just now I said, uh, a supplier for the ABC company. Okay. So how we configure the subsidiary company registration at the Dynamo Day? So here we have to set up the subsid. We go to go through the subsidiary company there, and then set up. We go through this one, uh, subsidiary company registration. So uh, at the ABC company there, we have to set up this uh, setting. So the server IP have to, actually is dependent. If let's say uh, you have to set up the server at Dynamo server there for the subsidiary company there. So you have to set up the server IP is the DYNTS or six IP. Hello. Okay. So here at the company, ABC company, the parent company there, we have to set up this. Hello? Hello, hello? Hello? Okay, so we set up the port for the Dynamo, the ABC company there. Okay, and then we retrieve at the Dynamo, company, uh, ABC, parent company there, we retrieve the uh, subsidiary company database. Then we set the login ID. Actually, is uh, we try to log in the subsidiary company SYZ the database with the ID and password. Then we log in and retrieve. After that, you, after you retrieve, then you set up the, this one subsidiary company. So here we have to set up uh, SYJ as the customer. Right? That's why we have to select the ID is the SYJ. And then this one at the subsidiary supplier ID for the SYJ we have to set up is uh, ABC of the parent company. So here is the briefing about the how to set up for this kind of the setting. So maybe like, you can try it. Okay, after that, at the SYJ the Dynamo database there, we also have to set the same setting. So this one, if let's say uh, these two databases is at the same uh, server, then we have to retrieve the same IP or the host name. Then we retrieve the same port. Unless the port you set up is different port, then you have to retrieve the different the port number. And then the database name, for the SYZ company there, we have to retrieve the parent company database. And then here we also set up uh, this one ABC is the supplier. And then at the ABC supplier, this one, uh, the parent company there, this one uh, uh, SYZ, the parent customer ID for the SYZ is a setting here. Lor. <clears throat> so uh, this one you have to see parent customer ID actually is the customer ID for the subsidiary company at the parent company there. So you try to set up this one, that means they got uh, the, uh, got in the, in the, how to say, got, got relation together. So this one you have to set up before you, we, you do the document, that one. <clears throat> so this one, after you set one, set this two, this two setting, then you can proceed to the next one. So this one have to make sure you set the correct one. Now. Actually, if let's say the company, uh, some of the company, maybe their parent and subsidiary also got, uh, got to the documentation together. So maybe you also have to set the supplier ID. Uh, here also uh, is the ABS SYZ means that uh, both sides also have to set the same one uh, for the, if some of the setting, if let's say they want to 
uh, send PO from subsidiary company to parent company or parent company to subsidiary company. So both have to set the same setting. <clears throat> but for today, uh, we try to not configure, con do so much confusing. So maybe uh, we try to set a uh, parent company for subsidiary company, then the company, uh, the subsidiary company is for, set for the parent company. Uh. So here, maybe after that, you try that one, no problem. Then only you try to do set for the uh, another another one. See, see, compare the setting how. <clears throat> so the next one, we have to set the process manager for the subsidiary sync synchronized setting. Okay, here we after we install the dynamic process manager, then we have to do the setting at the setup connection here. Then we go through the, just now, uh, after we you do the setup connection here, you click the configuration, you do the database setup first. So you click add, then you select the connection for the database. Okay, after that, you will see, you select the dynamic database for the subsidiary company. And then you click the test connection. After that, you save it. So the default here depends your your site. Maybe if let's say you want to change the name, then you can set the name like the this one Dynamo uh, SYZ. You can set the name here. After that, you click you select this uh, company. Then you click the configure as a subsidiary company connection. At here. You click the next one. After you click the configuration subsidiary company connection, then you click next. So this is the subsidiary company connection set up wizard screen. For here, the first one you have to set the configure connection for the subsidiary company. So here, cause just now we set the database is a subsidiary company. That's why here we show is the Auto fill in the subsidiary company setting already. Okay, so you click save and test the connection. After that, you click next, come here back to next here. Then the next one, you have to set the configure connection from the parent company. Here you have to set the just now uh, the parent company ABC Sundian Bahad. You click test, you try to test if this is successful to connect. Uh, the parent company. If connected, then you click save. The next, then you click the next one. So at this screen, you have to take note. Uh, if let's say uh, you have to by default actually you uh our uh, the setting you take all. So if let's say some of the setting you don't want to sync uh, when when this when the stock is the new item, you don't want to sync, then you can untake. If let's say the stock maintenance they got any changes, you can you don't want thing you can uncheck here. So this is the setting you have to take note, and you click next. Okay, for here you have to register. You sell you you put the ID for the this one uh, client socket for the subsidiary company. Then you retrieve the parent company database the company ID, and then retrieve the subs uh, subsidiary company, that company ID, and then you try to register. After that, you click next. So this is the setting uh, to do the synchronization for the subsidiary company. Okay, after that, you have to set up this task, what you want to sync uh, between the subsidiary company, uh, sorry, parent company to the subsidiary company. So here, actually, you have to set the synchronization. If let's say you want to sync the supplier, so sync supplier, it will sync all the supplier card file listing from the parent company to subsidiary company. The customer also same. If let's say you set sync customer, so it will sync all the customer's uh, card file to the 
from parent company to the subsidiary company. Stock also same. And then the BOM setting, bill of material assignment, and then the stock metrics, uh, stock image, stock post, his uh, purchase history record, and then the account, the child of account listing, and then the stock supplier. So if let's say you got, if the parent company and the subsidiary company got the synchronization for this posting, then you have to set up if let's say they want to sync group. Okay, after that, so the first one uh, we talk about, if let's say you got just now got set the sync supplier. So this is the parent company. If let's say got this fields uh, supplier on parent company there, it will sync this all the supplier to the subsidiary company there. So far here, okay. Uh, so how come this one ABC don't have a cost? This one ABC is to create at the SYZ. That's why no sync from here. Unless the SYZ got set the synchronization to the parent from subsidiary to parent company there, then this one ABC will sync back to the ABC database there. That's why here only you can see this one, two, three, four, five, the five supplier will sync here. This one ABC is not from the parent company. That's why uh, this one will not uh, at the ABC September 100. So for next, have to take note is same supplier task also included the company creditor control account. If the parent company got maintained the track company, uh, track creditor control and the track creditor bad debt control for these two account. So that means if let's say the parent company, the supplier there got set up this one, it will sync this uh, information to the subsidiary as well. But have to take note, you have to set the child of cow. If let's say uh, this child of cow, they got set uh, like this one, the sample. If let's say you see, uh, if let's say they don't have sing the child of cow, uh, when they sing to the subsidiary, if let's say this one, a cow code is not uh, as sick at the subsidiary company, if you see the setting got the account code, but don't have the account description of the account name. Cause this one, uh, 412002 is not as safe at the subsidiary company there. So it will become like that. So this one have to take note. Unless you create again, you create, uh, maybe if let's say they don't have seen the child account before seen the supplier, Maybe uh, can add the manually, uh, the subsidiary company can manually add the, this uh, account code under the child code there. Okay, so for the customer also same, you will sync to here from parent company to subsidiary company. And then here the same also, you will sync the company debtor account control. So this one have to take note also the child cow there. And then, but have to take note the additional shipping address, uh, this one, uh, it will not sync from parent company to subsidiary company. If let's say uh, you got, even you got set, set the sync customer task at the process manager there, but it will not sync. So this one you have to take note. Okay, for the stock here, if let's say you just now got set the synchronization stock at the process manager, you will sync what you got a stock maintenance there, what item got set up already at the company for the parent company there, you will sync to the subsidiary company as well. Okay, but if let's say, uh, so that's why just now the process manager, the socket setting there, got this kind of the setting. So have to make sure the stock sync setting got checked. And then if uh, some of the data from the stock need to copy or sync to subsidiary company database. Uh, if unchecked, even got set the sync stock task also will not copy the, sync, the data to the subsidiary company database. Uh. So this one 
as just now I mentioned, have to take note. So this kind of the setting is under this part. So here, if let's say the system cost will be the costing method, uh, sorry, the system cost, the reference cost will be like this. If let's say uh, uh, the parent company got create a new stock. So uh, if, you, if you got check all the, this kind of things, it will sync the information to here to the subsidiary company. If unchecked cost some of some time, uh, the subsidiary company maybe don't want to follow the parent company, the pricing or the cost. That's why they don't need to take this kind of setting up. They just send the stock information only. So if let's say here, uh, maybe got maybe the first time they want to follow the cost or the price, but if let's say the parent company got any changes for this kind of setting. So if let's say they do not follow, they also can uncheck from here. So this is the setting. And then uh, the stock also like active, uh, the stock alert level and then stock reorder level. This kind of the setting also can sync or do want to sync also can. And then the GL distribution and then the commission setting also. And then the extra remark, ISBN, the stock note, and then the brand group category and the user defined group one, two, three. So this is, you got the option. If let's say don't want to sync, if got any changes. So here you can follow. Okay. For here, take note, uh, this one is, you have to take note is the synchronization stock for the process manager there is not included the post image price book, supplier who supply the stock, compatible stock assignment, view of material assignment, and the location stock alert level and the location stock shell. So this one is not included at the synchronization stock there. But how come I put the, this one? So this cost this one for extra the setting at the process manager for post image uh, supplier who supply the stock view of material assignment. This one got another setting. Later, I will explain at the next few slides. Okay, so this is the, just now I mentioned the BOM assignment. If let's say just now the process manager got, uh, got do the setting for the synchronization stock BOM. So it will, what parent company got, if let's say parent company got set this one BOM assignment here, let it will sync to the subsidiary company as well for this setting. If I say they got set the setting to sync the date stock VOM. So this uh, another one is uh, if I say they got set the synchronization stock metric, it will sync all the stock metric item listing from parent company to subsidiary company as well. So this is the sample from company A to company uh, sorry, com parent company to the subsidiary company. Okay, another one have to take note for the stock metric format. This also will sync from parent company to the subsidiary company as well. Okay, this one, the next one will be post image. Okay, so this one post image also same. You let's say they got set the sync the stock image at the process manager, you will sync this one post image from parent company to the subsidiary company. Okay. The next one will be the sync post purchase history. Okay. This is to sync the, all the post member purchase history source. If this one, you have to take note for this setting. If let's say you've got set this one. Okay. This one have to go to post management there, set up the post setting and then post member purchase the resource there, you have to set up uh, these two database, the, the source ID, you have to set one. So make sure the all subsidiary was added, including the parent company dynamic database at the parent company. So it will sync this setting to the subsidiary company as well. 
So this one post member purchase resource will consolidation parent company and subsidiary combination, the post member purchase and the member point as well. So this is the sample. If let's say the got sync, set this one just now the sync post purchase history, it will show uh, either what uh, the subsidiary company there or parent company there. If you see when they check the pur member purchase history at the post there, you can see the column source DB name. You will see the result to, uh, you will get the purchase history uh, by the parent company and the subsidiary company record. That means if let's say the member got buy the, got purchased any item from the parent company, it will also will show at the subsidiary company as well. If let's say subsidiary, the, the member got purchased uh, at the subsidiary company, it will also will show the record or the history record at the parent company as well. For the member point inquiry, this one actually have to take note of combine the point with other, at the member module there set up and the member setting there, you have to set this one, combine the point with other dynamo source. If let's say they want to combine up from the parent company and the subsidiary company, both together point for the member want to combine together, you have to take note this setting. So the point will combine together. So uh, at the member module, dynamo member module there, you can go through the inquiry and the member point inquiry to check the point record as well. So the result to search the checkpoint member point history will consolidate the parent and subsidiary company database of if got set the post purchase uh, post member purchase history source and the member setting combine point with other dynamic source. Okay, the next one will be sync account. We will sync all the child account listing from the parent company to the subsidiary company. For example, this one. If let's say you got set the uh, Suntree debtor at the parent company, if uh, process manager will sync this one to the subsidiary company as well. It will also will sync the uh, account department and the account job for this synchronized account. It also will sync the company default setting for the default account from parent company to subsidiary company. The next one will be the sync stock supplier. It will sync all supplier supply stock listing. So if let's say the parent company got maintained this supply stock at the supplier there or the okay or the this one I stock maintenance there supplier who supply the stock so it will sync from parent company to subsidiary company <clears throat> but this one uh sync stock supplier task uh, for this one supplier stock have to take note is when set the purchase priority to set the same all number. La. You, if can, for the parent company, they have to set the priority one, two, three, follow the sequence. La. Don't set all one or set all two or three like that. So cause default the system use, when you set this one setting, it will default to fill in is the one. That's why uh, this one have to take note. La. If, uh, if all the same, it will not sync to subsidiary company. So as just now I mentioned, this one sub, uh, inventory there, the stock, also this got this kind of setting supplier who supply the stock. So actually, uh, either set one or any. If let's say supplier got set uh, this one, actually the stock maintenance there also will show the same setting at the supply who supply the stock under the stock there. So you can see this is a sample just now. Uh, let's say I set here the supply SKU as well. So here you can see for supplier A record for this item. 
Okay, the next one we will talk about the concept flow between the parent and subsidiary company. This is the flow between is uh, the document flow actually between the parent company and subsidiary company. So this, if let's say you want to do this kind of flow, make sure uh, just now the registration for the subsidiary subsidiary company there got set uh, correctly. Uh. If you set the wrong one, you cannot see the this one, the result at here. So we got a few scenario for this one flow between the parent and subsidiary company. The first one is we set uh, the crossover. The, so we have, actually we have the parent company, you can see at the left hand side, and then the subsidiary company at the right hand side. So here parent company is the supplier. We, so uh, actually they will see the, this is the document will move under the parent company is the sales order and the DO delivery order. For the subsidiary company there, we involve purchase order, good receipt note, and the supplier invoice. If let's say the subsidiary company, they want to send the PO for the parent company, then they have to do this kind of the setting. And then uh, the crossover document will can do like this. Uh. Okay. So if let's say the, S, the subsidiary company SYZ that got issued the PO to the ABC company, the parent company, you will issue. And then after they issue the PO, the parent company can uh, throw the sales order there to import this one subsidiary purchase order to the sales order there. After that, the sales order there can uh, usually we have to do the in, uh, put this info to the DO. That's why DO there, we have to uh, import the DO from the sales order there. After they issue the DO, okay, they have to issue the, so uh, when the subsidiary company know, know this, uh, they got the DO ID, then the, the subsidiary company there, they can throw the good recipient GRN to import the parent company delivery order to their GRN. And then, once they receive the invoice, they also can directly to import this information to the supplier invoice there. So the first one, A, A is the, just now this part A, you can see the subsidiary company XYZ issue the PO to the parent company. So the parent company will be the supplier of the subsidiary XYZ. So at the uh, subsidiary database there, you have to issue the PO. And then this one B, B is the, this part import from the subsidiary PO. So here you can see, uh, so at the parent company there, this is the parent company database. They also have to create a, just now they also just uh, have to create a customer ID for the subsidiary SYZ. So when they import, uh, they can import from the subsidiary company PO. Okay, parent company could retrieve. Uh, so once they click the import from the subsidiary company PO, you will see uh, this screen, then have to select the subsidiary company. If let's say got few company, then you have to select uh, this one PO from which company from which subsidiary company. Okay, for here, uh, the parent company have to know the subsidiary company uh, PO number, then they have to fill in the PO number here and then retrieve the document. After they retrieve, you will see the listing here, then you accept. So before accept, actually 
here we uh, the parent company have have to decide what the pricing they want to use for this one subsidiary company. They want to follow the customer the price code, price one two three four five, or the purchase order pricing. That's why here you can see the two different price. Okay. So after you click the accept here, uh, you, you will prompt this screen, are you sure you want to import into the stock list? So pick note that uh, detail record will first clear. Okay, this information means if let's say uh, the sales order here got, just now maybe got key in anything here, it will clear all the listing from here first, then only will import these two items to this uh, sales order. So this one I have to take note. Okay, after you click just now that one, so all the purchase order will item will import to the parent company sales order here. So here you they just click the save, then issue the next one is the import. They have to issue the DO for the subsidiary company. So here is the C. C means this part sales order to DO. Okay. So after that, issue the DO. So have to import from the customer sales order. Then select the just now the sales order number. Then click OK. So we we'll import to the DO there. So once successfully to import to the DO there. So uh, they will send the DO to the subsidiary company. Once the subsidiary company received the DO and the item as well, they will issue the good receipt note from here. Okay, they can find back just now the supplier, that's mean the parent company ABC here, then can import from the parent company DO. That's mean this is the D part. So that's mean it's the this part import from the parent company uh, delivery order to the good receipt note. So here is the part to import from the parent company. Then here, okay, for here will be better is after you retrieve the parent company information, here you can select, no need to fill in. You can select the DO document number from the parent company. After you select, then you retrieve the document. And then you accept, you will also will see the screen. Uh, here you will, in, uh, you want to clear the listing. Uh? That's mean here, if I say got fill in anything, they will clear first, then import. So this is the subsidiary company uh, successfully to issue the good receipt note. Okay, after that, they will receive the invoice as well. So they can import this GRN to the supplier invoice. So this is the E part. So you can refer back just now the, the screen there. The E is what? So you can import, then you click OK. So supplier invoice number need to manually insert cost this one uh they, you have to key in back just now the supply uh the parent company what they issue the supplier invoice that you have to fill in here. So this is the four for the scenario one. So the next one is the we got another scenario two is same involve got the Parent company, they will involve two uh, documents. Uh, subsidiary company here will also will involve two uh, documents as well, but they will skip the DO and the GRN. For here, SY Tech subsidiary company also will issue the purchase order to the parent company, then parent company will issue the sales order, then create the invoice. So the invoice there, they also can import 
the subsidiary SYZ there also can import from the parent company invoice. So this is the flow. So this is the detail on the Dynamo database how to do. First, we also can uh, send for the, just now, the subsidiary company have to issue the PO as well. And then the parent company can issue the import from the subsidiary company purchase order. Okay, same step have to fill in and then retrieve, we click accept. So the flow actually is same, but uh, maybe import from the customer. Okay, here also we'll issue the invoice, uh, sorry, the sales order like just now, but after they create this one, the just now the sales order, just now the scenario is import the sales order to BO. For now here is the import the sales order to customer invoice. So this one is depend on the company for what they need to do. If let's say they do need to issue the DO, then directly import sales order to the customer invoice, then can skip the DO. So this is the depend the company, their, their site, the business operation for what have to do. <laughs> Here also, sales order can import from the per, uh, parent company, customer invoice, once the uh, subsidiary company receive the invoice from the, uh, the parent company. Same step also here, but just now is uh, scenario one is the retrieve the, the uh, just now is retrieve the, the DO. For here, we retrieve the invoice. Okay. For here, the last step is just now uh, scenario one cost the import from the GRN to this supply invoice. That's why they have to manually key in the supply invoice. For here, they no need to manually to key in because the information all retrieved from the parent company, the customer invoice there. That's why here for this scenario, the supplier invoice here will auto fill in by the system. Okay, the next one will be the scenario three. This is the most simple scenario. Lah. Uh, not so complicated, complicated as just uh, before just now the two scenario. This one is once the subsidiary company issue the PO, then parent company just issue the invoice. That the last one, the company uh, subsidiary company S Y Z just issue the invoice. Three document involved only. So the first one also same as issue the PO and then they can uh, from the subsidiary company they import the information from the subsidiary company there and then also retrieve the PO number by manually key in at this one also. And then here you can receive the purchase order from the subsidiary company as well. <laughs> And then also issue the invoice from SYZ there that can issue the supplier invoice, import from the parent company customer invoice. Here also can send retrieve select. Here, here is actually is select. Then retrieve. Same also cost this one uh retrieve directly from customer invoice, uh, parent company. So customer invoice here also will auto fill in the invoice number. Okay, this is the summary the flow can through. Actually, here, um, if let's say they don't have issued the PO from the subsidiary company, here actually the ABC parent company is directly issued the DO. Then upside this part, you can skip the sales order and PO. So actually, uh got many uh, possibility to under this uh, parent company and subsidiary company. 
depends the business operation flow. But here, just now, is the most standard one. Now. Unless they want to skip, maybe they can skip the flow like sales order and PO, or directly can issue the invoice. Then, uh, subsidiary company directly issue the invoice only. So this is the sample. Depends the your customer uh what business flow they want to use. Okay, the next one, uh, what should have to take note above the scenario? Import the purchase order from the subsidiary company. Here, just now I uh, got mentioned uh, to follow the price code, customer price code, or follow the purchase order price. So have to select, uh, if let's say uh, the parent company, they want to decide to use uh, which price for, the, for their subsidiary company. Actually, if let's say the price could, when you set up the customer there, the customer you follow the price one, then here we'll show the price one. If let's say uh, set up there for the customer use, the price code is price three, unique price for customer here will show the parent company stock maintenance price three. For PO here, we still follow uh, what, subsidiary company issue on the invoice there we will show the price on the same as the PO. Okay. Next one is the skip in valley stock. If you check system will skip the stock not assisted. That's mean uh, for this one example, the red color one at uh, not exit at the parent company when import from the subsidiary PO. So you can skip it because maybe uh, sometime the subsidiary company that issue the item uh, not under the parent company there. So uh, you can got the option to skip it. Another one here will be show in valid stock list. We also can see just now, uh, maybe here I show the sample, just one item. Maybe uh, the customer want to see the full list. Here you can see the tab here in valid stock list. System will separate the invalid stock to this listing, then uh, which is not existing as just now I mentioned the red color one. So all the if let's say got many items here, you can see the invalid stock will be under this listing. The next one will be the import DO from the parent company. So we got the setting is the new stock list here. System will separate the, the stock list which not assisted at subsidiary company. Means maybe uh, this situation maybe is uh, the synchronization from the sub parent company to subsidiary company no sync the stock or they don't have to set this kind of setting before or the, the process manager, the synchronization stock there no, no not work. So here system also can retrieve uh, the item is not exist. So if let's say you confirm one to create this one stock list, uh, they can do confirm the new stock. So this one is confirm to add the new stock to the subsidiary company database, which is not existing at the subsidiary company. System will follow the same parent company stock maintenance setup to import to the subsidiary company. That means this item, how to set up at the parent company at the stock maintenance there, subsidiary company also will follow the setting to import from parent company. So usually uh, for set up the same stock as just I mentioned, uh, on dynamo process manager, you wouldn't be need to do this. Uh. Okay. So this is the assemble confirm new stock, how to do. After you click the confirm new stock, then here we'll see the stock list, then you click yes. So once you stop import process completed column, this one is new stock checkbox will auto uncheck for you. That means this is after import, then this is not the new stock idea. So you just press OK to continue the proceed. 
Okay, so after that, the subsidiary component there, you can go back to the stock maintenance there. The item will be uh, checked. You can check back the new stock, able to see this idea. The stock will under, under the subsidiary company store idea. <clears throat> okay, the next one is the serial number to show the stock serial number then they can retrieve the serial number stock list here. Okay, DO history. This one also sent from the import, the delivery order from the parent company. So here you can retrieve the DO history which has the import the pet from the parent company. You can retrieve by the date you filter. Then here you can see the column is import Amen. So check box here, you can able to uh, check, uh, take or untake here. But here you can see this one original also will take. If let's say suddenly here is take, but here untake, that means already amended before. So you can see when you check back here, you can, you can mark as the imported for toast period imported. That means if let's say uh, some of the DO already imported, but uh, you want to check this one, maybe no check before, so you can take it also. So here, that's why here, uh, able to check the, for the previous imported DO from the parent company. So you can take or untake as just now mentioned. Okay. So another situation is uncheck the DO. So could be so you can re-import again to the subsidiary company. That means if let's say import before, maybe got some of the issue you want to re-import again. So you can untake, then you can retrieve again the document and re-import from parent company to the subsidiary company. So this is the unchecked uh, example to import. You can send filter the date retrieve, then you uncheck it. So you save it. You will see this message to prompt up, then you click yes and click OK on it. So you can see, are you sure want to update the parent company DO status? So if you say you want, then you click yes. Then you can come back to the, after here you will see it is uh, unchecked already. The original import also unchecked. Then you can come back to this one, DO document number here. You can see just now that document can retrieve again from here. And then after you retrieve, uh, after you select the document, you retrieve again. Here you can see, then the old detail is up ready to import to good receive note here. Okay. So the next one is the import customer invoice from the parent company. Here also got show the new stock list, same as just now the import DO from parent company, but this, uh, this one is the import from parent company invoice. So this one also is the same function as just now I mentioned at the DO to from import DO from parent company. And then you also can do the confirm new stock. Also can see the serial number listing here. And then the customer invoice history list, same as just now the so you can uncheck or amend the column here to do the re-import or some of the history, uh, maybe it's imported before, then you want to check it's import. That's why here you can uh, no need to retrieve again. So that's one, if for this column, if you check here, you cannot to retrieve uh, the documents to show here. The next one is you for the subsidiary company there, they got issued the PO. So even the PO 
has been imported by the parent company to the sales order or customer invoice, all the PO will be under outstanding list. Actually, if let's say uh, they don't have to do the subsidiary setting by one company only, maybe the subsidiary company issue the PO and then import to their subsidiary company uh, sales order. Oh, sorry, PO actually is issue, then import to the GRN or supply invoice. So actually, uh, this PO will not under outstanding. But for here, we even this, this PO imported to the parent company already, but we also come back to the subsidiary company there, all is still outstanding. So this one, if let's say the, uh, maybe the subsidiary company there, if let's say they don't want to show is under outstanding, after they done import, uh, if let's say they receive, that means they confirm the parent company already received the sales order or parent, uh, the customer invoice there to, to receive already, then here you have to make sure to, to do the what setting. That's been, uh, that's been all is already imported by the parent company already. So this is the step. You can select the document PO there. Then you click more, check the document matching status for the PO. You can come to make sure the stock, you, can, you have to select the stock is it uh, imported by the parent company there? Then you what all for the item, then you will ask, is it one to uh, what all the outstanding record? So here have to select item by item to what. Uh. Then here you can see the purchase order record mesh. So make sure the both stock item from here has been whited and matched with the PO. And then here you can see the sample. Because this one actually uh, matched 10 ID, then balance will be show zero. If let's say you don't have show, uh, do this, the balance will be 10, the match will be zero. So here you have to make sure these two items for the PO there is a white ID. Then at last, here we'll show this uh, PO will not under outstanding already. Okay. So this is the for the structure, the configuration for the subsidiary company registration. And then just now I'll got cover the process manager, how to sync the subsidiary information to the from parent company and subsidiary company and then the document concept flow between the parent company and subsidiary company. So the next one uh, will cover the configuration, subsidiary company promotion and the post update registration. So this is actually the new features. Uh. Maybe uh, you be previous, uh, maybe you, if you got received uh, previously, some of the document for the subsidiary company, maybe this one is not covered. So this is the new, maybe quite new for the, some of the user. Okay, so this is the features actually from version 2020.3. Here you can see the subsidiary company set up there, you got two more settings here. So if let's say you've got set the two setting, you can copy the parent company, the promotion setting or the post update setting to the subsidiary company. Okay. After you've done the, the setting, so able to, as just now say, able to copy the promotion report to post register subsidiary company. So the promotion type, supported is the promotion plan or the promotion plan. Even the promotion setting there also can uh, it 
copy the setting. So for here, how to register? So this is the scenario from parent company need to copy the promotion setting to the subsidiary company. At here, make sure this setting set on the parent company, the database, then you set the source ID for the child, uh, that's mean the subsidiary company there. You put your own description, then have to select the database name, you retrieve the company, and then you will see the company name there. After that, here have to take note of, do not register for this company. That means you cannot register the parent company under this setting. If not, the promotion record would be removed during the process cloning the promotion. So here have to take note. That's why here you can see the so big words from here. Okay, after you've done the setting, if let's say the parent company already set the promotion plan, this is assemble to uh, assemble, set the promotion plan ID, then you click the more here, you can copy to subsidiary company promotion. That means a parent company, you can see this one is a parent company. Uh, they set the promotion plan ID. If let's say the promotion plan also have to run on the subsidiary company as well. They click on this company uh, copy to subsidiary company promotion here. You will prompt on this screen. So here you can select, can check again, uh, actually check again the setting, make sure uh, it's error is and no error. Then copy, press the copy now to the, to copy, uh, copy parent company promotion to the registered subsidiary company. So if let's say they got just now a uh, registered subsidiary company, they got registered few subsidiary company. It will copy to all the subsidiary company. If let's say you select one, then only select. It will copy one subsidiary company only. So once you system prompt this screen, you have to uh, Confirm again, are you sure want to copy the current promotion to register subsidiary company? Please take note here also, the, the, the record would be first removed if copied previously. That means maybe this one is the second time you copy, so it will remove the previous the setting or see, got any situation, maybe uh, they got set before or they got uh, copy before, then have to take note for this one. So all location will be used in copy promotion. So once you confirm, you click yes. Sir. Then you will see process done on the process log there. Then you click OK. Here, you check back on the subsidiary company there, you will show the same promotion settings on the promotion plan there. You will copy all the things from here. So the location here, maybe the subsidiary company here have to take note. Is it all the company, uh, all the location you involve the same promotion? If not, then you can uncheck here. Okay, the next one will be the update, the, po the post update registration. So after done this registration at the subsidiary company post update, it able to copy the centralized post update record from the parent company to post register subsidiary company. If the parent company already done the setting uh, centralized post update, so you copy post update to the subsidiary company. It could be monitoring all the post update on the subsidiary company inquiry there. We've got our sub company client socket uh, post update summary. So what is the centralized post and update client socket update? So maybe if let's say you, uh, some of the users still don't know this feature. Actually this one is a 
centralized update of post and client socket for all posts uh, which connected to the Dynamo client socket will be performed auto update. That's mean if let's say you got do this is the setting actually uh, can assist you uh, do do the setting at the Dynamo. Then the setting once you confirm already, if you set throw the Dynamo client socket to the post there, then post there will receive the new version. Then post there will auto update the new version which already set on. Uh, this centralized post and up, uh, client socket update here. But have to take note, post or touch post or touch and beat or client socket must upgrade to version 2020.3. Actually, Dynamo also as well have to new version. So uh, if you only got this kind of function works. Uh, okay. How to register SAM? Here also you have to go through the uh, just now subsidiary module there set up. You can see the config uh, subsidiary company post update registration. Then here also SAM, the scenario is a parent company copy the post update setting to the subsidiary company. Okay, so this also have to do the setting on the parent company. The source ID you have to set for the subsidiary company one. Here also got mentioned, cannot register for this company. This company means the, uh, the parent company here. That means also same, you cannot set uh, the company ABC under the screen. If let's say uh, you set on the parent company there. So this is the setting already done on the parent company for the client socket post update there. Here, you also can see under more here, copy to subsidiary company post update. So once they set all of this, then if you copy to the subsidiary company as well, then you will also will see send the screen like just now the promotion. Make sure uh, no error here. And then you click the copy now. Then you click yes for this message here. So here we have to take note of post update copy previously. Uh, once plex again the yes, you will remove previously record and copy the latest uh, post update setting on the same post update ID to subsidiary company. Here, also, Sam, you will see under the process log that will show the process done. And then you can log in the uh, subsidiary company there. You can see on this client socket post update, it will follow the same setting. Okay, but here the client socket ID, you have to make sure is it uh, all I. ID here already. So make sure again then if they will auto up, update the setting to all the subsidiary posts. Okay, so just now got taught so many the fraud and do how to do. At the end, we have to see the report or the sum of the inquiry screen for the subsidiary. Here actually we got a few inquiry screen under the subsidiary company. We got the stock balance inquiry, cash sales and collection, stock sales analysis summary, and the client socket post update summary. For here, you can see the stock balance inquiry. We can under the screen to see uh, to check uh, which subsidiary location you want to check the uh, the balance stock. So once you set here, you will you, you, you retrieve and search, then you will see the result for the subsidiary company under the screen. And then here also same now. Just now, if let's say for the cash sales collection, the subsidiary location there, you select the how many location, you will see how many uh, location for the subsidiary company we under here. So here you can see all the record will be here. 
and then the subsidiary stock sales and receipts also will see check all the subsidiary company uh, locations uh, sales analysis for the stock and then as just now for the post client up socket uh, update that one here also we'll see the result and the you can check the post update id what you set it will show here is it uh, successfully to update or not yet so the next one will be the report. We also got three reports for the location sales summary, post sales summary, and the post uh, post stock sales summary. Also same here. Also have to select the subsidiary location. Then we'll see the report generate for the subsidiary company, and then the post sales summary. After that, the post stock sales summary. So here actually it depends how many locations for the subsidiary company you want to check. Actually, this one you can compare the your local location. That means the parent company location and the subsidiary company location. You can compare the sales between. Maybe you want to compare uh, the parent company one of the location with the subsidiary one of the location, then you can compare it. How come the report for this, uh, between these two locations, the sales are the, the balance stock are all you can compare. So this is the, uh, maybe you can do the strategy for business for, for them. Now. So this is uh, my subsidiary company presentation. Thanks all for enjoy this webinar. Thank you so much for sharing. Wow, very powerful. Huh? A lot of things. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's quite tough huh, to understand the whole process, but you can see the beautiful part, how the system handle this so complicated process, the system handle step by step to guide you, very straightforward. So this is why, when you do the subsidy company, you need this kind of the solution to help you to simplify your process flow. Am I right? So now we come to the Q&A section. Any question to ask? You can raise your question. Okay. May I know is sync, pro, sync post menu between company will be the available future? Okay. This one, we keep mute. Actually, uh, someone requested. So we, we will take notes. Uh. Let me know. Let's say you got many customers who prefer this card, so let me know. Then we see how to uh, do the uh, enhancement for that. No? Anyway, please log a ticket for us. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, may I imagine may you how, when Jim first share you the floor, are you, can you follow up or you feel it's very complicated? I need to know after Chingo sharing, you have an idea the floor already. So are uh, you feel that simple or just so so only? You can give me some point. Eh? If you think it's easy, put one. If you feel that still, still feel difficult, put two. I need to know from all of you after share uh Chingo sharing, I need to know your status now. Can you help me touch something in the chat box? Yes? One and two. One is you very clear. Two still need practice. Can you help me tap something from the chat box there, please? Two, two, okay. I think I have to practice first. Uh. For me also, practice before presentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, we need practice more. Uh. Good. So, while you, while you do the testing, you may give some idea, let's say you feel that, when you do testing, you feel that I got a better, better idea how to improve the system for also can you get proposed to us. You feel, you feel that you got a better way. La. But this is the color what we implement so far. La. So far, so good la, for the customer side. You know, this I think is must because if we be too simple, they may be all certain of issue. That's why we try to make it step by step. La. You have to involve the subsidy. Okay, just now, I have some something to share with you uh, from the synchronized uh, 
parent company to subsidy company inside the checkbox of the sync progress option. Uh, normally, if you really run the franchise business, the checkbox for the system cost, they always don't take. Because the main company cannot be allowed allow to subsidy you know the cost of the, the purchasing, you know. The system cost normally they don't sync. Uh, just share with you. Normally, uh, they don't sync. For system cost, normally antique. Uh. So any question to raise, please. So hopefully after today, this section, you have an idea of this uh, new business model. Think about your current customer. They, any your existing merchant there, maybe want to expand business, you can share this idea to them uh, so that you can help them to up sales to run the new business model. If you face any uh, sales uh, presentation issue, you can let me know. Uh, our team will help you to do some presentation if you want. Uh, sub company or franchise also must buy enterprise version to have this sub company module. Basically, it, normally in our setup, the master database is still in the server. That means your franchise, that means your host are HQ. The franchise also invest a subsidy. Then your franchisers, they should no need to invest because they can use just use the online and online time use access to the animals, your database is so you good enough for it. So invest one enough subsidy of it no need or access to the main server. Then you should invest the multiple server. La. If you use a good server, suppose they have a we call the rack, uh, the mean the duplicate the, the database. If you use a good server, you can do that. Means one have one of the hard, uh, hardest type they will shift to another have the mirror mirror server function. When you come to franchise, they should invest a better server. You invest about let's say for example the common you invest about nineteen k or nineteen five uh, fifteen k to twenty k. In this case, so they have a mirror function. Uh. They may have this to the other hard disk. They can mirror up. They mean one hard disk out. They will be, the other hard disk will up. So this way to minimize your issue of the server time. No need to worry about that. Of course, uh, internet down, what can I do for you? You use a prop panel. <laughs> internet issue, I think we have to think other way. Like, because this is not our control. Out of control. Maybe that's not the flow document there. Cannot do. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, or... No question. Got, or... got one question. Got one question. Sub company can limit can limit their concurrent user or not? Okay. Sub company can limit their concurrent user. You say you want to control the user. Yes. You know, investor. I want another. Uh, console, license control plus. License control plus. Uh, they want you to plug in. Uh. You then can control the parent company and sub company got how many user under the user group there. Actually, if you invest the enterprise, you already have the a license control plus. Already. You need to set how to set the license control by database by user. You can set that. In the, your franchise server, there, your main server. So, I think the license control plus mm -hmm. we, we shared before, right? Chen mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the new, uh, under our new release, last. last, uh, release, we, last we, got a top, we got a topic is about the location control and the license control. Uh, correct, correct. Like. Can you refer back the location control and license control, the webinar, the the video inside they share with how to set a setting, how to control user to set a concurrent for each database. I think the YouTube there got. Yeah, yeah, they have. Maybe that later you request from us, then we try send back the link for you. <laughs> mm, okay. So you see, yeah, uh, at current our download the functionality, I think. There's a lot of controlling now, uh, depend on how your knowledge you are. If you more understand our download current uh, function we have, then you have a 
give a proper advice to your merchant. How to do the setting, how to do the business model. We have a lot of things now. So for you, you feel that uh, any query you can always ask me or from your end, you may think after so many sessions we've done so far, you think that which module you think you need to further training, you just let me know. We can reorganize again if you want. So give me your request. All right. All right. Uh, nothing to share. I think I think we thank you for your patience to say to you for the, this section for one and a half hour. So I think if no, can I I think I need to close the section if you know. You can put one for me if you think it's good enough for today. Just put one. You close the section now. So thank you, Simon, and thank you everyone to join the this one webinar. So if they say got any uh feedback, you can let Simon know, then we can try to do better. Maybe my site, uh, maybe the slide there not got some not clear, then you can try to ask Simon there, then we can try to better uh, let you know more understand for every topic. Uh. <laughs> okay, thank you, Svart. Okay, thank you, guys. See you next webinar. Thank you, thank you.